What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going straight into it. We're finishing off part two of the JP Morgan Investment Banking Virtual Internship. Last time we ended just before we started working on the financials. So that's where we're gonna start now. We're moving back into the Excel. This is done. We're just gonna leave that to the side. And what we're going to do now is work on those uh, financials. So most of this information was given to us in the handouts and I'm just going to rearrange this uh, to make it a little bit more useful for uh, our, essentially just our client, right? So this is the final product we're looking at here. So I just plugged these numbers in from the handouts that were provided. So 900, 961, 1000, these are all in millions. So the E here means expected. Uh, these are actuals. Now, this is how I calculated these numbers here. So if I go there, we have 961 on 900 minus one. That gives us the growth percentage, same thing here. If you guys are interested how to get this dash, uh, what you do is you go into more number formats, custom, and format out the, um, the format code like this. So this basically means that if it's negative, it would return, oops, it would return a red number in brackets. And this is what happens when it's zero. So we've just got the dash there. Okay, and yeah, the rest, again, this is all plugged in. So I've also highlighted the EBITDA numbers and the NPAT number. And these here have been calculated. Margin is just the EBITDA over the revenue for each thing. And similar thing for the margin for NPAT. There we go, so slightly smaller numbers. Okay, now once this is done, pretty simple. We're just gonna highlight it and paste it into our slide deck. And quickly, just before we paste it in, I quickly just changed the format uh, just, to try and, just to try and keep it exactly the same as what's happening in the uh, slide deck. And I'm just gonna highlight this entire, this entire uh, table. I'm gonna transfer it to the deck. And there we go. So paste and keep source formatting and that's how we get the same table in here. So we can just arrange it, put it down. There we go. So the final section here now is the indicative valuation. And we're actually gonna to have to return back to the Excel sheet and we're gonna work on one, one, one more thing that should be quite quick. So I'm just gonna start it right here. I'm gonna quickly do it and then I'll explain the table.
All right, so here's the table done for the indicative valuation as well. Where the numbers have come from, once again, uh, this just EBITDA number is from the financials. Now this growth number is the only one that I think might be a little confusing. It's actually from the very first uh, notes of the call, so which says that uh, the company has grown 20% uh, from the previous period. And these are the EBITDA multiples that uh, have been provided also, I think in, actually for this task now. And then we just simply multiply um, 300,000 by those multiples, 300 by those multiples to get the three to 3.5 billion valuation. So this is roughly, roughly how much they're saying the business will be worth. So I'm gonna do a similar thing, uh, just copy this table into the deck. Now also notice that I just quickly changed before uh, the formatting of the, of the other deck, of, uh, sorry, of the other table here, we, we just, I just changed the margins to also be italicized and I just added some lines to make it look a bit, a bit nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna paste this into the deck and we're almost done with this task now. So back into our slide and I'm just going to paste, then keep source formatting and there we are. We can try to stretch it out to match. Great. Okay. Excellent. So that's that basically finished. Okay. So these are the numbers that we would aim to present. Actually, let me just try edit this really quickly. If we chuck it onto this side, there we go. That looks better. So there we go. These are the numbers that I'll be pretty happy to present. This is, this is what the JP Morgan is really looking for. I was really tempted doing this task to simply regurgitate the information that was already provided, but this is a much more structured approach and this is really what you're gonna be looking for when you're delivering something to your supervisor and then also to your clients. Very simple, very clear cut and it highlights all the important information. So for the second part of task two, we are working on the process letter summary, which is just another slide in the slide deck. So here we get all of the information that we require from this document, which is the MA miscellaneous cell doc. So it kind of it basically outlines the entire process. And what we're doing is again, we're just really kind of summarizing the info. So all of these dates here, they're pretty much in order. Okay, something I think important is you know be specific because in real life, you know, the time zones matter. So here we have 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, on from April 9th to, uh, oh, this one is actually April 13th. There we go, April 13th, um, I believe. Uh, Hong Kong time, so that's really important. Okay, check, check that April 13th, if that's actually correct. And then uh, here are the events. So we have access to indicative bid documents is the very first one, indicative bid Q&A submission due, indicative bid due, um, start of final bid phase, uh, release of process letter two and final bid. Now I think the really, uh, the more confusing uh, part of this is keyword streams, right? So these are essentially, you know, in a word, basically definitions of what each uh, thing means in round one and round two. So we have evaluation. Um, I just said initial valuation analysis based on indicative bid documents. Again, this is all the information you can find in the document that is provided. Uh, just make sure you read it very carefully and search for these keywords. Then we have structure and financing. So begin financing discussion. Uh, then we have approvals, collect and confirm required approvals for round two. You basically go through uh, similar similar word streams. So site visit and management presentation is really the only new one. So we need to organize site visit uh, and organize the presentation. Then due diligence, conduct due diligence based on new information collected, organize Q&A submissions, valuation. Here we're finalizing valuation based on financial forecasts and so not just the indicative bid. Then financing, confirm sources of financing. And once again, the approvals were just, you know, commence preparing uh, applications for different regulatory approvals. 
It might feel like there's a lot of summarizing, so don't fall into the trap of simply restating the information that has already been provided. What you're trying to look for here is you wanna provide a little bit of an analysis and you also wanna provide insights into what that information really means, what are the implications of that information. I'm not sure if we really touched on that last bit, but we definitely expanded on the information. So it wasn't just a summary, we did provide some more insights and a little bit of a better analysis on that information and we sort of basically we're sorting through information that may not be as important and we're presenting the most important information to our supervisor and the client. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know how you went. I really enjoyed these first two tasks. Tune in for the next task. I think that one is super important and very interesting. We're gonna be working on building that DCF model to essentially value the business. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if the multiples are correct. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. The goal is to get it by the end of the year. Yeah, stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you next time.